I am an artist from Mitcham. Um, there's nothing else I can say about myself as an artist because it all just got said, I think, apart from that I'm from Mitcham. Um, <laughs> um, but I feel really, really, oh, actually I'll add that I'm in a queer decolonial punk band called Screaming Toenail, who are fantastic and <laughs> make me really happy. Um, but yeah, I feel really, really privileged right now to be part of something that I would call a cultural renaissance of individuals and collectives creatively holding space and centering the voices of black and brown people in the UK. In fact, just last night, a collective called Gaudem, um, in partnership with another collective called Babes, spelt BBZ, took over the Victoria and Albert Museum and filled it with music, with dancing with artworks that spoke to a really broad variety of black and brown British experiences. And they're not alone. There's fantastic collectives such as Voices That Shake, there is Skin Deep, there is Black Lives Matter UK, there is Black British Girlhood, to name just a few of the collectives which are creating really much needed spaces for discussions and actions um, responding to the institutionalized violences that are faced by people of color in the UK. My own collective, Sorry You Feel Uncomfortable, is made up of lots of different artists um, doing lots of different things. Uh, there's DJs, there are sculptors, there are academics. We're kind of an art collective, but also a kind of political, critical collective. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the collective later. But I will say about my artwork that I draw a lot of inspiration from the histories of African and Caribbean revolutionaries, um, like Claudia Jones, who set up Notting Hill Carnival, or the writer and playwright Sylvia Winter, um, Miriam McCabe, the musician, but also like very outspoken activist and these people, um, but also not just uh, the people that came out of Africa and the Caribbean, but also the belief systems that came out of the diaspora, specifically belief systems which have roots in West Africa. So there is a people, there is a culture, there's a language called Yoruba, and every single place that enslaved Africans were taken to, Yoruba found ways to subvert, to resist, um, and to grow into different belief systems such as um, voodoo in Haiti, such as Santeria in Cuba, Umbanda, Quimbanda in South America, Shango in Trinidad. Um, and these theologies have been really, really nourishing to my art practice and it's been so fantastic to collaborate with uh, devotees and artists who are also invested in these uh, practices. Um, and in terms of the collective, it's, it's funny because in the history of black power collectives, referencing African theologies respectively, utilizing potent iconographies and quoting proverbs and ancient philosophies. It's kind of a militant trope, but I honestly don't mind being a cliche because it has helped me to equip myself with a rope, to fasten myself to the mast of a vessel that's anchored to an island where denizens wrestle with depthless perceptions of inferiority and endless abuses of institutional authority where microaggressions are pretty commonplace, but people don't like to talk about race, unless faintly reflecting on memories of oppressions faced by assimilated minorities, the more brazen racism of my parents' generation. See, I'm not likely to read in any hotels or pubs, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. Those kind of bold hostilities are now as retro as vintage clothes or gollywogs. No, racial oppression these days is a little bit more complex. It feels like it's become embedded within the subtext. It's the shadow, not the act, so it's harder to react. It's the sinew between muscle and bone, not the color of the skin, but the subtle undertone, unless it falls out clumsily. Someone calls you, uh, brav. They say, uh, do you sell drugs? They shake all your white friend's hand and try to give you a spud. They <laughs> tell you, I'm not afraid of Brixton anymore, conceitedly. Or they ask you, where are you really from, despite being told repeatedly, or I notice that many of the books about our collective histories are vanishing from schools. Or I feel a stranger without consent touching my hair and they say, oh, it just looks really cool. Or 
I really find it hard to talk about the police, but I'll just say that they are a racist gang of fascist thugs, to say the least. But actually, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> we live in a post-racial society, proven by London's multicultural variety. Although it's true there are definitely more interracial lovers, Orientalism still colours our perception of other. Of other. See, the canvas looks balanced, but the frame is bent. Imagine a Middle Eastern oil painting of all the money spent, conjuring up narratives of Muslim women who are all apparently victims that need saving, from Muslim men who are all apparently fanatics constantly raving about taking over the world and robbing little girls of agency and education. What a perfect justification to continue a legacy of colonization, of nations less blessed than thee, for they shall in their turn to tyrants fall while we shall flourish great and free. It's actually got the lyrics of God Save the Queen. But yeah, it's easier to repress or ignore maybe colonial guilt when the axis of power is reversed on its tilt so that Nordic countries, Christian white countries like this one, become the ones tyrannized by villainous immigrants who want our culture bastardized. They're going to corrupt our morals. They're going to steal our jobs. Wow. That is a handle on fear, a bronze cast doorknob on the Houses of Parliament or the House of Lords because a war on terror is one we can all applaud. Terror is an abstract concept, it's not a thing you can fight. Anyway, it feels like politics has been aestheticized by so many detestably digestible television politicians with simple sound bites to anesthetize, like Brexit means Brexit, to anathematize the masses with apathetic appetites, so we end up chewing on the effect without addressing the cause. I hear people up in arms about the so-called savagery of homophobia in Nigeria and Uganda and other Commonwealth countries, forgetting that fear and hatred was imported when they were British territories. I hear people tut-tutting about the instability in Haiti and Jamaica and other Caribbean nations, then laughing at the idea of any reparations. I hear people up in arms when a bigot is caught saying something racist off camera from the BBC or Channel 4 and ITV, but what about the absolute lack of black people on British TV and less portrayed as rioting, unnecessarily exacerbated, or non-violent revolutionaries who happen to get assassinated, or the occasional token. Or, of course, money-obsessed, misogynistic rappers whose lifestyle can be packaged up and sold to rich white masses because black people don't actually own any of the industries that profit from our collective strifes. And I'd really like to see that change within the span of my life. So I will continue to research and to take pride and joy in the writings of African and Caribbean revolutionaries, I will continue to adorn my shrine both outside of my mind and inside with potent African iconographies, and I will con continue to call out these kind of atrocities, and I will not feel sorry if you feel uncomfortable. So that is a spoken word piece called Sorry You Feel Uncomfortable, and it's also, Sorry You Feel Uncomfortable is also the name of the collective, and I want to take this opportunity to just say that all of the work that the collective does is the result of hard work that has come from an artist called Bobby, Asante and another artist called Teresa Cisneros, it was their brainchild and they have helped us um, with the work that we've done with Tate, with the Welcome Collection, with Nottingham Contemporary, across Europe in different ethnographic and um, archives and, and museums. Um, and the collective is really fantastic, everybody in it is great and you should check them out individually. But my practice, personally, I would say one thing that a theme that runs through my art practice is um, satire. Um, so in a way, the token jumpers are a form of satire because they are saying, you know, I feel like this system that I'm engaging with is ridiculous, but I kind of have to engage with it, but I can at least take the mick a little bit, you know? I can have a bit of fun with it and poke fun because satire has been used to undermine and demean people of color, you know, tropes like the angry black woman, the submissive Asian woman, the, you know, there's so many different satirical attacks that have been launched on people who are uh, marginalized in different ways. So I think it's actually been really useful to poke fun at hegemony and undermine dominant power structures. And I'd like to just share another piece of satire with you, which is, uh, so I make books, illustrated books, and one of them is called The Alphabetical Anthology of White Middle Class Liberal Proverbs. And I'd like to share <laughs> a little bit of that with you. Um, a is for All Lives Matter. Although all lives are not treated as collateral when we're harshening our stance on immigration. And actually, all lives aren't routinely targeted and abused in racist deportations. And actually, all lives don't make up... So it's actually got this wrong. It's 30% of US prison populations and 13% of UK prison populations, which is alarming considering the matter of all lives now lived out in mass incarceration. B is for, be the change you wish to see in society. 
straighten your back, be the new black, and be access to affordable education. Both eyes on the prize as you be the end of public sector privatization. Be positive and be billions and billions of pounds worth of reparations for Caribbean nations burned with buggery laws born from British subjugation. <laughs> See us all, can I touch your hair? <laughs> can I make you cringingly aware of how curious I find you? Can I carelessly center my whiteness in this critique of your current cultural climate? Can I take that little bit of your religious dress? Can I take that little bit of your history? Can I take that little bit of your culture? And can I turn it into a commodity? Can I collect objects of your resistance to curate as ornate oddities? Deesful, don't worry, darling, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Disclaimer, details in the following dialogue are deliberately hypothetical. Don't get defensive because my opinions are nuanced and purely theoretical. E is for, um, 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 uh, even Africans had slaves? <laughs> e is also for erroneously equating an epoch of enormously diverse and equally expansive pre-colonial power structures with the justification for genocide, evading the issues that still preside, era upon era of black communities disenfranchised, of black economies intentionally destabilized. E is for an enslavement which evolved instead of ending. And E is also for an equality which we never seem to reach. But E is also for an enslavement which evolved instead of ending, an enslavement which will continue as long as Europe is still pretending to be an example of equality and of human rights when all that we enjoy here is the profit from wars kept out of sight. And I will leave you on that page. But it's also a book that's available. I'm also a struggling artist from Mitcham, so you can buy the book. <laughs> um, yeah, and check out Barbie Asante and Teresa Cisneros, who put together the collective, and Sorry Feel Uncomfortable, and all the other wonderful collectives that are working in London. Thank you so much.